Every single week on Desk of Lady Ada, we do the great search with DigiKey, and Ada Fruit Lady Ada uses her engineering skills to show you to find, shout out how, how to find all of the things on the DigiKey website. We call it the great search. Now, I have a little video that I want to show later about Stemma, Stemma QT, but why don't you kick this off? Yes, so I thought people were probably wanting to make their own Stemma QT boards. These are boards that have these little connectors on the end. Or maybe you want to connect to our um, larger Stemma series, which is, uses the Stemma PH pins. And I thought, let's go to the overhead real fast, and I'll show what these look like. So, can we go to the overhead? Yeah. So on something like this board, you'll see I have these kind of large JST PH connectors. And like, you know, if I have um, an LED strip, for example, I want something with high current, um, something with a big connector that can handle these thick wires. Uh, JST PH is great. This is a two millimeter pitch connector. It's very common. You'll also see it in batteries. Sparkfun originally uh, started getting LiPoly batteries with JST uh, PH connectors, two millimeter pitch connectors. And so they kind of became the maker standard. And so I started using that exact same pinout. And then um, other boards like the Microbit uses that same connector. So you can like start to cross connect all these batteries and it's become sort of a maker standard. So if you want to maintain that standard um, and have your stuff work within this community or you want to prototype with these maker parts and then make your final product, these are really good quality connectors. They're really great value um, and they're really reliable. One thing I'll watch out for, I'll tell you to watch out for is I've seen folks use um, non-genuine JST connectors and they catch. They, are, they don't have this like really smooth click in, click out. So these are, you know, they're firm. You have to like exert a little bit of pressure to remove them, but they don't stick. Like they, they don't end up yanking the wires out of the housings. And I've seen that if you don't get genuine JST. So, you know, just watch out for that. Um, some of them are compatible, but they're not quite compatible. Um, so these are the larger uh, two millimeter pitch. And then for uh, the Stemma QT boards, we use uh, one millimeter pitch. Again, this is another standard SparkFun came up with. Uh, they're really good at you know being the innovators in this market. And they said, let's make breakout boards that just plug and play and chain over I squared C. Um, I squared C has become basically the standard for sensors. We, we rarely see SPI only sensors anymore. Um, I squared C, you can clock it at 400 kilohertz or up to a megahertz. And uh, it's, it's you know, well supported by pretty much every platform on earth. So having just power, ground, clock, and data over I squared C works wonderfully for many chips like this uh, BMP390 barometric pressure sensor. Um, and again, it's these, they fit snugly. They don't come out easily, but they do with a little bit of a yank, which I really like. These are non-latching connectors. As long as you're cool with non-latching connectors, then, then I think JST, SH, and PH are wonderful. So the difference, SH, one millimeter pitch, PH, two millimeter pitch. Okay, there's other pitches too, but these are what you'll see a lot of. Um, the, you know, why not just go for 0.1 inch pitch? There are, there are, you know, XH series and other series ch uh, pins that are 0.1 inch, but they, they start to get very large, right? Once you start getting past like three or four pins, it, you're like, wow, like this connector is getting really chunky. And if you're not carrying that many amps of current, um, these are much more compact, which will mean that your, your board doesn't start getting overwhelmed. Like if I had a connector this size, on a breakout, you see it would start to take up, you know, half the body of the breakout would be the connector. It, and it wouldn't be as uh, slim and svelte as these wonderful JST SHs. So let's show off um, finding some JST SH connectors. Let's go back to the computer. Don't forget, if you want ESP32 S2 minis, they're in stock right now. Okay, so... Um, Remember, there's two kinds. Let's first go to the JST PH. Um, and there's data sheets, of course, available for these. Um, when you search for a connector like JST PH, you know, you're going to get a couple, you're going to get a lot of connectors and cables and like pre assembled things. 
So again, don't forget to go here and then you can look at the photos to see if that's what you want. Yes. And these come, the pH has come in like, you know, 15 position, four position, um, men, you know, all the positions you want. And they come in, uh, this is called the right angle and this is called the vertical, right? So this sticks up off of the board. You plug facing down. Um, they are keyed, which I really like. I think when I was younger, I used non-keyed connectors. I thought as a child, I spake as a child and I soldered as a child, but now I use keyed connectors and I no longer flip my cables around. Um, I, there, if you see the obsolete, that's probably because it's non-Rojas versions. So you'll probably want Rojas versions. And then, you know, I, I use the two, three, and four pin the most. And um, these also come in through hole. The pH is coming through hole because they're large enough. And so if you're using um, a process where you need a high mechanical strength, these, you know, these are quite strong and they're inexpensive. You could pop them in easily and wave solder them. Um, for the surface mount versions, you'll notice that there's those big tabs on the side. If you solder them down flat onto your ground plane, you'll have pretty good mechanical stability. Not as good as through hole, but still quite good. So, um, yeah, use these, uh, there, I like that they're available in, you know, like every size, this is the through hole right angle, then there's the through hole straight version, three pin, four pin, all that good stuff. And, um, you know, we use these again for, you know, anything that has to pass like an amp or two of current, uh, you can also get the matching connector. Let's see if they link the matching connector. Oh, they do have jumpers. This is kind of handy. So if you want to just buy cables directly, uh, they're linked from the bottom. So it's a jumper cable from JST. Um, there's the mating products. So uh, various types of housings that you can use and then you can get the pins to make housings or honestly ju just get the jumper cable and then you know you're, you're good to go. You can always cut the jumper cable if you want to solder it to some other device or connector. All right. Uh, next up, let's look at JST SH. Um, again, you want to go into the uh, pin connector. In this case, we're going to go for the four pin because we want to have it work with our stomach QT boards and we want active. Um, click OK. And we'll see, yeah, there's pretty much, you can get um, vertical. There's two vertical versions here and I don't quite know the difference. These look going to be identical. TBT. Oh, you know what? Probably one is in a um, tape and wheel and one is uh, is cut tape or something. Um, so this one uh, is vertical. So it, again, it points up and um, it's a little tough to see, but maybe I'll show on the 360. Give it a moment to load. This is handy when you want to like make sure that the connector is exactly right. Okay, so you can see that there are these um, solder tabs. So these are like, you know, melted into the body. So you'll just have to have a solder, two big solder pads to keep these from, from pulling. Because especially since you're gonna be pulling up on the connector, um, just make sure that your uh, footprint has those. Um, it's in the data sheet and you can also download uh, CAD models, which I've been starting to use by the way. Uh, I used to make all my models by hand, my CAD models. Now I actually download, you know, one of these, whatever is suggested, and then I, I might tweak it to kind of fit the way I want it to look. But the footprint especially, I really like having the footprint made for me and then I can attach that to a schematic symbol I already like. Okay, one quick question. Mm. Um... Let me find that. Uh, do they have JST connectors that you can clamp onto a ribbon cable and make your own custom cables? That's a good question. I think that you're not going to find something like that. Like, you're, you know, you're, you're not going to find an IDC connector for um, this size. Sometimes, let's look back to the pH. This one... I think that this might be a crimp connect. Like you might be able to poke a wire into it. Um, that's the best thing you're going to be able to do because it looks like you can either. Yeah, you see how there's a little, there's no 3D model. 
But see how there's a little uh, U here? I think you you can use a tool like a punch down tool, and you could you could poke wires in, and then as long as it's the right gauge, check the data sheet for the gauge. It'll it'll grab onto the wire and cut through the um, wire sheathing, and it won't be a very strong cable. I wouldn't use it for like long term use, but it probably would be good enough for you know very basic work, or if it's enclosed and protected, like you know if you yank on it, uh, you could yank it loose. But for Something that's protected and not being yanked, I think it's fine. Okay. This is as close as you're going to get to IDC, to be honest. Okay, so, sorry, we were at JSTSH. Four pin. So if you are um, making a, a STEM QT board, is it pretty much the part you want? Um, I think it's a little you know, thing at the 360 if you want it. Um, the photo, so this is the, basically the connector we use on all of our boards. And, you know, it's in, in quantity, it's going to be about like 20 cents or so. We can get them in real, but they're really reliable. Um, pretty much had them on like now tens of thousands, maybe a hundred thousand different boards. And, uh, you know, no failures, almost no pick in place failures either. Um, and, you know, they, they have many cycles of use. So, no, so far nobody's like worn out this connector. So I really like it. Um, JST, they make really good connectors. Check out the JST website also if you want to see other cables and connectors that they make. So you can mix and match with you know, your existing design depending on how much current you need and the gauges of wires you're trying to connect to. That's the great search. And that's a great search with Suzuki, but we're going to have one little extra segment. We have a special video all about Stemma that we just did. So I'm going to play this and then we're going to... Do you like this connector? Here's more about it. Yeah. What is Stemma QT? Stemma is an easy way to connect sensors and devices with no breadboards or hand wiring needed. A controller board can plug into a bunch of devices for fast building and prototyping. Stemma QT is the smallest Stemma connector used exclusively for I2C communication. You get two power wires and two data wires. I2C shares the data wires so you can chain together multiple boards. Stemma QT is compatible with SparkFun Quick and Seed Grove devices using a JST PH2 SH adapter, so you can use all the hardware you already own. Stemma QT is built into Adafruit Clue, MagTag, QtPy, and more. You can get building without any soldering at all. Stemma QT is built into tons of Adafruit sensors and devices. Just look for the Stemma QT logo on the back of the board. And with that, here's a great search. Wait.